Well, good day, YouTube. Today, we are here to talk about how the rich think. Rich and wealthy. Now, actually, there's a difference between rich and wealthy. Let's take a look at that first. You see, rich is about the money. Rich is about having all the cash and all the trappings of cash type thing. Wealthy is about having not just the cash, it's about having the time, the health, the friends, the family, all the things that go with it. There's no use being rich and dead, no use being rich and in a hospital bed. You know, you've got to actually have the, the energy and the health and all of these things to go with being rich. There's no use just having cash. And I, I meet people a lot who, yeah, they make a lot of money, but they're working 60 hours a week. They don't get any time to enjoy the money. They're working hard to provide for a family they don't even remember. So let's make sure that our goal is not just to become rich. Our goal is to become wealthy, and we start to understand the distinction between the two. So let's take a look at the six points we want to cover off on today. Uh, by the way, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe. Make sure that you follow. Hit the bell. That's the one. And make sure you get an announcement every time a video comes up. So first thing, the book, Think and Grow Rich, okay? If you have not read that book, I would suggest reading it every year, twice a year, once a year, every single year. Think and Grow Rich is kind of like the Bible for how we actually approach money, how we actually get our brain to think in a level of financial abundance, how we actually get our brain and our heart involved in wealth becoming a part of who we are. It, it, very simply put, First time I read that book, it changed my whole perspective. And I think that every single wealthy person understands that if you study wealth, you can become wealthy. If you don't bother studying it and practicing it, it's like you can't run a marathon unless you train. You can't run a marathon unless you practice, unless you eat right, unless you condition yourself and do all those things. And the same is true for money. Unless you're doing the things that actually take care of wealth, you're not going to get there really think and grow rich says it in its title. You have to first think rich in order to grow rich. You have to grow into being wealthy. You can't just magically wake up. You've got to grow into your goals. You've got to learn and become the person that achieves your goals. And, and I still go back and think of it as the Bible. Now, obviously, it's not been written in this era, but there's a dang lot of it. Um, Sharon Lecter rewrote it and did Think and Grow Rich for Women, if you want to read that one, because the original one was a little, uh, shall we say, in an era where it was kind of sexist. Uh, in fact, a lot sexist. But Think and Grow Rich as a Bible for study on the subject of money is a very important aspect. I even know one of my buddies who every single year he studies that and runs a study group on Think and Grow Rich, the book. So... If you want to become rich, you have to first think rich. Okay, so let's look into that in a little more details. Point number two, if you want to be have a lot of money, you got to have a lot of gratitude towards money. You can't be upset that other people got it and you didn't. You can't be in a place where, oh, that person has money. Oh, they must sell drugs. You know, oh, look at them in their rich car show-offs. If you have a negative appreciation to other people's success, if you have a negative view around other people's money, then of course, what are you doing for yourself? You know, a simple Bible verse that basically said, what we deny in others, we deny in self. Let me get that right. What we deny in others, we deny in self. And so when you think about that, when you are having a negative about someone else, going, oh, look at them doing their show-off thing. Oh, look at that person there. What you're doing is saying to your subconscious brain, saying to your head and heart, I don't want that in my life. You know, when you see someone else who's achieving and you go, wow, look at that, congratulations. Wow, look at them, that's amazing, well done, congratulations. There must have been a lot of good work gone into that. You know, and you have to appreciate that. But not only for others, you have to appreciate it for yourself. If you start appreciating your own success with the subject of money, then you start to really achieve more and more of it. I see people who waste money and they want more money. No, if you're a waster of money, if you don't treat money with respect, don't expect to be blessed with more money. Let me say that in a slightly different way, okay? If you know someone who wants to be rich, but they waste all of the money they currently have, they're not doing any saving, they're not doing any investing, they're not doing any tithing and giving to charity, they're not treating money with respect, 
you, you can't imagine that they're going to be given more money to take care of. The universe doesn't work that way. If you cannot manage a small amount of money well, don't ever expect to be blessed with a large amount of money. It's just not going to happen. And so time and time again, we see people out there who want to be rich, but they keep wasting their money on stupid things. They would rather try and look rich than be rich. They're deep in debt. You know, um, if, if I can be blunt around how me and some of my buddies look at that, it's, you know, we, we term that person usually the Friday night rich guy. Um, and it could be a gal as well. Friday night, they're out blowing it up, having a big old time. You know, come Monday, they're eating ramen noodles for the rest of the week type thing. They, they want to look rich. And it, looking rich doesn't get there. You know, I sit down and I, I kind of look at the number of people wearing their Gucci loafers. And you sit down and you look at the, hang on. Most of the billionaires aren't wearing the Gucci loafers type thing. Most of the billionaires just wear normal clothes. I wonder why that is. You know, and it blows my mind the number of times. And, and for me, the wealthier I get, the less I care about showing anyone that I actually have wealth. I remember as a young man, dang, when I first got rich, I had all the jewelry, all the watches, all the everything, make sure everyone knew I was rich. But then all of that money, if I'd reinvested it, imagine what it would have turned into today. And so, you know, I'm not saying don't enjoy your money, but the way money usually works is pretty simple. You got to churn it before you burn it. What does that mean? You take the money, you invest the money. See, the money you make is not, and this is the point we're going to get to in a minute on point number three. The money you make is not yours to spend. Let me say that again. The money you make is not yours to spend. The money you make is yours to pay the bills and invest. You invest, the higher percentage that you invest, the faster you'll get to a point of your investments now buying you your toys. Investments should pay for toys, not income. Income should be invested and investments will buy you the luxuries of life. Do not buy luxuries with your income, buy luxuries with your returns. And that brings us to point number four, point number three, which is investing. The old saying of you don't need to be rich to invest, but you need to invest to be rich is so, so true. The habit of investing is more important than the amount. The, the habit of investing daily, weekly, every single thing. The habit of going to the bank and depositing your investment. The problem is no one goes to the bank anymore. But it used to, and I, I did it with my kids, where it built a habit of investing. And so that habit of going to the bank and investing your money, that habit of, of having money come out of your account every single week before you even see it, having some of your paycheck go to the, the investment account rather than straight into your bank account where you'll spend it, putting it into an account where you don't see it, you can't touch it, all those sorts of things. I sit down and I look at the most basic level of investments, you know, having a, an insurance, a life insurance policy is a basic level of investment. Yeah, it's not going to get massive, massive returns, but it happens every single week. It happens every single month. It's getting put away and it is a surety for my kids and my family of the future. Having basic accounts for my kids, college funds, you know, setting up a college investment fund to pay for their college. It's just so simple to do. And this is where having a very basic account set up is a great starting point. If you own your own business, you can build wealth by working, okay, because you're building wealth or building the asset of your business. But if you work a job, you can't build wealth by working a job. You have to take some of that money and invest it to do it. You know, when Warren Buffett says you can't rely on one source of income, you need to invest so you have a second source of income, nothing could be closer to exactly what we're saying here. Our goal as to build wealth is to invest a percentage of what we make. Now, what percentage? Well, if you go back to Think and Grow Rich, you go back to The Richest Man in Babylon, some of the earliest books on wealth that I ever read, they all said you got to invest a minimum of 10%. Save 10%, invest 10%, and tithe 10%. That's basically the way they said it. And I sat back and I looked. And I said, well, if I can do more than 10%, imagine what that would look like. What if I could do 50% of what I made into investments? And most people are like, well, I can't live off of 50% of what I make. And it's like, well, make more. 
study all my stuff here, get onto BizX, get onto the 30X success, get onto all the programs that I teach, Wealth, uh, 30X Wealth, read all the books, and make more money on a day to day. If you're making, say, 80 grand a year now, and you can't live off of 40 grand, so you're putting 40 grand away and 40 grand to live off of, well, make 160 grand so that you can do that. Does that make sense? You know, it's, it's crazy the number of people. Don't increase your expenses when you increase your income. Increase your investments when you increase your income. Invest more. If you're not making enough to pay your bills and invest, you need to work on yourself. You need to get better skills. People are like, well, they don't pay more for this job. Then get a different job. Well, I don't have the skills for a different job. Then study and get the skills for a different job. Well, Brad, they don't pay that much at the company I work in. Then work at a different company. Well, Brad, you know, in sales, you only make what you think, and I'm only selling this much. Then go sell something else where you get paid bigger commissions. If you're not willing to change, then don't complain about the results you're getting based on the work you didn't do. And the hardest work is the learning work. It always has been. It always will be. Point number four, manage your money. Now, so you got to start investing. Once you've started investing, then you have to manage that money, okay? Don't just put it in there once and let it sit. Actually manage the returns, in business, you want to learn how to buy companies and build them up and sell them, okay? How do you buy and build and sell companies? There's things you can study there. And why business? Well, business has the highest return on investment. Why do you think it is the venture capitalists, the biggest investors in the world, buy companies? Warren Buffett, what's he do? Buy companies. Why do they buy companies? Because they realize very clearly the company's value is based on its profit. Let me teach this to you real clear. If you buy a company and that company's doing a million a year in profit, then the value of the company is based on it doing a million a year in profit. If you double the profit to two million a year, the value of the company is now based on two million profit, not one million profit. Keep that one in mind. Real estate, you wanna learn how to manage your money in real estate. You wanna learn how to buy, renovate, and redraw against the property. Every single one of us, and that's in my 30X Wealth. Read my book, The Real Estate Coach. Read The Wealth Coach. Read these things. Study, understand. If you don't study money, you're going to always work for money. Your money will never work for you. That's a big important point. If you want money to work for you, you've got to study money. Okay? No more other ways around that. So when you look at it, real estate's pretty dang simple. You buy a house, you need 20% deposit. The other 80% is paid for by the tenant. You get a mortgage, the tenant pays the mortgage for you. You say they pay rent. No, they don't pay rent. They pay off the mortgage. So over 20 years, that house you bought is paid for by someone else. It's not rocket science, but you do need to study it to get it. The stock market, you got to learn the stock market. Dang, there are massive companies out there with lots of people working really hard, massively smart people out there running these businesses, making lots of profit. You buy a share of that company. See, if you don't want to buy the whole business, you just buy a share of a business that's running really well. You buy the shares and you hold on. You let them grow the business and you take a, a cut of that. You take some of the dividends. You take the growth in the business. And when I sit down and I take a look at it and go, hang on, Jeff Bezos, is he a pretty good manager? Yeah, yeah, pretty good manager. Pretty good leader. Runs a great company. Do I think Amazon's going to get smaller in the next 10 years? No, I think Amazon's going to get much bigger in the next 10 years. Great. Buy a share. The share will go up because it's going to get bigger. Not complex. Cryptocurrencies, NFTs, all these things. But again, you got to study it. Cryptocurrencies is really currency trading, okay? What's the demand for the currency? Determines the value of the currency. High demand for the currency, high value of the currency. We've, we've been currency traders all our lives, you know, with US dollar versus British pound versus Australian dollar. Now we've got cryptocurrencies to trade. NFTs, it's a, I mean, when you sit down and look at it, it's a great way of buying a digital piece of something. Anyway, study it, learn it before you start investing in it. Don't invest in something that you're not an expert in. Uh, that brings me to point number five. Pick your niche or niche, depending upon where you are or what side of the planet you are on. By the way, a reminder, subscribe.
Um, when you get your niche, so in business, you might have a niche. For me, in business, I love any business that I can take global. So if I can franchise it, license it, if I can do that, that's the sort of businesses that I look for. I like B2B businesses most of all. That's my niche. It's what I'm good at. It's what I enjoy. It's what I love. So learn what you enjoy. In real estate, pick your niche. You might be the master of two bedroom apartments that you build and turn into three bedroom apartments. You might be the master of buying a house on at least a one acre lot, knock the house down and build a set of apartments on that thing. Whatever it is, become an expert at it, become great at it. You might become an expert in a particular suburb, not a particular style of building, but you might know that area so well that you know the exact things to buy, when to buy it, how to buy it, all that sort of stuff. Stock market, the same. Don't try and be an expert in all shares on the stock market. Become an expert in a certain area. You know, I... I look at my dad. My dad loves mining. He's an expert in mining. He's run mines in his life. When it comes to investing in shares, he looks at mining companies. Why? Because he knows all about it. He's an expert at that stuff. He can tell you when he reads the geological survey what that actually means. I can't. I look at him and go, I have no idea what that means. I should not invest in mining because I don't know what I'm doing there. Okay? Invest where you're an expert. And that then brings me to point number six. Develop and write your own set of rules. Create a set of rules. Now, what do I mean by rules? Well, an average investor or a bad investor goes on their gut feel. They pick something based on gut feel. A great investor will create a set of rules. And what do I mean? I mean, they'll say, I will buy it if it meets these criteria. If, it, if these are the things, I will purchase that. Like in real estate. And again, if you study my stuff, I teach you my rules, okay? Learn all of those things. But if I'm looking at real estate, I might say, I will only buy it if it is this much house value and this much land value. I won't buy something that has a low land value and a high building value because the building goes down in value and the land goes up in value. I might only buy it if I can get rent that covers the mortgage payments. I might only buy it if there's 90 plus percent occupancy or 97 percent occupancy in that area. I might only buy it if I can get funding to 80 percent from the bank. You know, so you develop a set of rules as to what it is. The more knowledge you have, the easier it is for you to create a set of rules around what works, what doesn't, how you do it, how it actually becomes a thing. You know, if, if I can be really blunt around rules, People often ask me, what should I invest in? And my answer is very blunt. You should invest in enough books so you don't have to ask me such a stupid question. Okay, if you do the learning work, then you know. The most important investment is knowledge. The most important investment is understanding how to invest and therefore making great investment decisions. There's no use just asking someone for a great investment decision because then you've got to go back and ask them again and again. Become an expert at making money, become an expert at managing money, and you will end up wealthy. All right, what's your top lesson out of today? What's your top takeaway? Who are you going to share this video with? Share it right now. Send it to your friends. Make sure they're watching this stuff with you. Get them to subscribe, not just you subscribe. Take care. Take action.